Okay. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us here for this uh, question answer session with me, James Crichton Smith. I'm the communications manager at Community Housing Cymru, and I am joined by. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Ria Stevens. I'm head of policy and external affairs at Community Housing Cymru. Fantastic. Thank you, Ria. So we are here to discuss the programme for government that the Welsh Government uh, published last week. We want to try and understand or chew over why it's important to the housing sector, what it means for those working in housing, all those with interests in housing, particularly if you're working in different sectors, say like uh, health or something like that. What does housing have to say about it? Well, that's what we're here to chew over. Now, you can follow us, of course, on Community, uh, community Housing Cymru, that is, uh, C.H. Cymru on Twitter, Ria's on Twitter as well, Ria underscore Stevens. We're also on Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, all your various social media sites. And there's, of course, our website, which is chcymru.org.uk. Um, now, if you are unfamiliar with the housing sector and community housing Cymru, we are the membership organisation for housing associations in Wales. So that hopefully gives you a bit of background as to where we're coming from. So let's crack on then. Ria, first of all, you've had plenty of time to chew this new programme for government over. What is it uh, and why should we care? Good question. <laughs> Fair question to start with, James. Um, well, I guess essentially, um, the, the, the programme for government is, is a statement um, or a series of commitments of what any government, in this case the Welsh government, commits to do over their next term, in this case the next five years. Um, it's, it's in some ways really similar to it's in some ways really similar to um, a manifesto, actually. So if we think about a manifesto as um, a series of promises or offers that political parties make to the, the electorate, the, the population of Wales, the programme of government is usually um, a bit more detail um, and a bit more concrete and says, right, now you've elected us, we promised you this, this is what we're going to deliver. Um, in terms of why we should care, so, you know, it's a fair question. Um, in short, government creates creates the conditions um, by which housing associations in particular can can achieve their ambitions because so can achieve the things that are important to them so government has tools in the toolbox like legislation it can make laws um, funding uh, the Welsh government controls about 16 billion pounds of funding a year in Wales um, and so actually um, the program for government uh, kind of sets out how government will use those tools in its toolbox, what's it's going to prioritise and what's it, what, it, uh, what it would like to deliver. Um, and so, yeah, some pretty good reasons for caring, I guess, from my perspective. Well, I think you've convinced me um, why we should care at least. So <laughs> if you're just joining us, um, I'm joined by Ria Stevens. We both work for Community Housing Cymru. I'm the Communications Manager. Ria is the Head of uh, External Affairs. Um, we are just chewing over the programme for government and what it means for housing in Wales. Now, this Zoom chat is set up as a meeting, so you can have your camera on, camera off. It's up to you. If you have questions, please put them in the chat. If you're watching on Facebook, you can ask questions uh, in the chat uh, in the comment section below as we go on. So we've just uh, discussed the first question, which is why we should care about this programme for government and what it means for housing. The second question, um, Ria, to you is how much is housing mentioned? We've got this massive programme, it's a whole government, it's a whole Senate term that it's looking at. It's obviously not just going to be about housing, but how big a feature is housing in this programme for government? Yeah, that's a, re that's a really, really good question, James. So, um, I mean, the document's not long, it's 17 pages. Um, so that tells you something about the level of detail it goes into. Um, I actually know how many times housing is mentioned because it's a kind of... Um, it's a bit of any 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 policy officer will know that when you're faced with a big document, Control F will um, <laughs> will help you do a really cold, a quick search of the thing that you care most about. Um, so I did that. Um, what's really interesting um, is home is mentioned twelve times in the in the program for government, housing seven, so combined nineteen times. In and of itself, that isn't that interesting. But if you take a look at the other big um, political issues. So the stuff that we know that um, the people of Wales really, really care about health mentioned 20 times, the economy mentioned 13, education mentioned 17. So you've got housing that's kind of holding its own against these big, big, chunky political issues. 
Um, and so that tells us a couple of things, really. One, um, the government's really serious. Um, it, housing obviously has a central role in helping it to deliver its ambitions. What's particularly interesting, though, is for, from my perspective, if, is um, that housing is mentioned across the entire programme. Um, so there is a kind of discrete section that looks uh, mainly at housing. Um, but you see mentions and references to housing in the section on climate change and decarbonisation. Uh, on the economy, you see the role of housing kind of championed and value in health, um, which is just wonderful to see that recognition of the importance of, of housing to the nation's health and well-being. Um, so I think we can be, there's reasons to be cheerful in that, actually, because I think, um, you know, we set ourselves as a sector, as housing associations, we set ourselves the ambition of demonstrating the value of housing uh, across the whole, um, across um, all of the outcomes that are important uh, to the people of Wales and to communities across Wales. So, um, you know, health, um, the economy, climate change, um, and actually the programme for government reflects that. And so that's really positive. Absolutely. I mean, I was looking, I've got it in front of me, which is why I keep glancing over to the side here. Page seven stood out for me. Uh, make our cities, towns, villages, even better places in which to live and work. Um, and it covers lots of different bases. But as you say, it, it's, it's weaving it into lots of different areas of policy, isn't it? Yeah, which is exactly right. And you could you could say, actually, that kind of um, place is really at the heart of this programme for government. You can see um, that... Um, that through lots of lots of different areas kind of uh, this the program for government kind of leaves itself some room um for local interpretation really but it also um sets out the sets the kind of standard of what it wants to achieve by the difference it makes locally so that it makes to individuals that it makes to communities and it's, it's just really clear that housing's got a huge role to play in that now you mentioned uh the lead up to the Senate election, obviously, the Home Manifesto is something CHC put together, making housing, making the case for housing, and as you say, the importance of it across different sectors, not just to do with housing. Do you feel like when you read this document, the programme, that Welsh Government have listened to what was in that manifesto, listened to what housing potentially has to offer when it comes to the benefits of uh, decarbonisation, for example, on the health service? Yeah, I, I absolutely do. I really do. I was um, it was actually really cheering to read to read the program for government in lots of ways. Actually, to see um, so so much of our um, of the language that we used in our campaign and, and, and of the ideas um, and the ambitions that that we kind of pitched to see all of that reflected back um, in a program for government is <laughs> is a really lovely feeling. Um, it's a really wonderful feeling. I think there are a couple of different. Um, there are a couple of different parts to that, though. I mean, I think um, we shouldn't underestimate the impact of um, the, the regular ongoing day to day work that our sector and CHC does with government. So the fifth Senate um, um, and the, you know, the fifth Welsh government, um, that term was characterised by um, our sector working with government and other partners on some really, really meaty, tricky issues. So helping to work through the big challenges so whether that's decarbonisation or the, the challenges thrown up by the ind independent review of affordable housing supply actually we were we were really in there um helping to shape and develop solutions and actually shaping thinking all the way along um and you can't take that for granted but the campaign itself the election campaign itself there was some really just some from my perspective some of the strongest features um, were that we developed our solutions in partnership, so with our members, um, with, with our delivery partners, with tenants, you know, we had a kind of open, really open conversation um, about what we wanted to see from the next Welsh Government. But then not even just at the ideas generating stage, also through the campaign itself, there were lots and lots of different voices um, campaigning for the same things across Wales. So whether it was housing associations um, talking about the manifesto and the ideas and what that really meant locally in their communities or whether it's our delivery partners, there were lots and lots of voices that kind of collectively were amplified calling for the same thing. Um, but to answer your, you know, your first questions, yes, the fruits of that can be seen in the programme for government. Um, I think government have listened. I think there is a lot of, um, commonality and kind of shared ambition uh, which is just a wonderful place to be definitely i can sense the relief in your voice as well yeah. <laughs> <Not that laughs> absolutely. Words, it's, it's paid off. 
um, I can imagine that the late night trying to devise all of these things ahead of ahead of the uh, election as well. Um, just in case you're joining us on uh, Zoom or on Facebook, uh, I'm James Crichton Smith. I'm the Communications Manager for Community Housing Cymru. I'm chewing over the programme for government with Ria Stevens, who is our Head of Policy and external affairs. We're just going over the programme for government, trying to assess what it means for housing, how often housing is mentioned in this programme, for example. So if you're watching us, thank you for joining us, for giving up your afternoon just to chew it over a bit with us. You can, of course, follow us on Twitter, CH Cymru on Twitter. Uh, and we are, of course, on Facebook. Ria is on Twitter as well, Ria underscore Stevens. And Ria, you're always putting out useful information when it comes to this sort of stuff. So that is, that's really worthwhile following you, I think, if you've got an interest in this sort of stuff. So we've looked at whether Welsh Government uh, have sort of listened to what the Home Manifesto, which CHC put together before the Senate election, whether they've listened to what the asks were. Um, the the programme, though, of course, is not um, exhaustive. I suppose mm. there's always details in there that you probably wish you knew. Are there any things that you feel like, oh, it'd be good to just flesh that out a bit, understand better what direction we're heading in in a particular way? Yeah, you're absolutely. You mean you're absolutely right, James. I think um, I think I referenced the point just a few moments ago that it, you know it's 17 pages, which you, if you think about five years of work across an entire government, that's you know that's not a lot of description. It's not a lot of detail. Um, but to, to be honest, it's a it's a. I, th I think the program for government is probably a response to the political reality. If I'm being honest, um, so uh, the numbers in the Senate mean that to pass any le legislation, to pass a budget, uh, to really do any business of any substance, the Welsh government has to find friends and partners to work with. Um, they will have to um, do a deal uh, or, or find some kind of uh, kind of yeah political political deal really um, uh, with. Uh, another political party represented in the Senate chamber. Um, the absence of detail gives them some political wiggle room. Um, it, it has allowed them to basically paint in bright colours in terms of what they would like to achieve and the kind of detail, the black and white, the grey underneath can all be sketched out and can all be negotiated. So it's a pretty, uh, pretty smart move. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's just a response to the political reality, really. Um, in response to your question, yes, there's a huge amount in there that we need further detail on. Actually, I would say that that's across the entire programme for government. Actually, there isn't anything in there um, that I would say we've really got um, a detailed roadmap sketched out, how it is that this will be delivered, what our role is um, in facilitating that. Um, uh, you know, there just isn't that level of detail. But to be optimistic or to strike an optimistic tone, um, what that does allow is it allows you some space um, and it allows you to get around the table and help shape the detail. So to work um, with Welsh Government, to work with ministers and with officials to help sketch out and shape what that detail looks like to help kind of co-create uh, the roadmap. If that's not, not too waffly, <laughs> but, to, you know, um, actually let's um, to kind of chart it out together. And there's massive opportunities in that, actually, to to. For government in particular as well, you know, for, to government to learn from its delivery partners, and that won't just be um, exclusive to housing associations, there'll be lots and lots of organisations that fall into the, that category, but for government to learn from people um, who are working on the ground, who understand what it's going to take to make this work, um, so that actually your policy um, and your aspirations that kind of set out in the 17 page document actually really translate to real change. So real change for people and community. So there are some massive advantages, um, even though we all want much more detail and much more certainty. And that's perfectly reasonable and a perfectly human reaction There, there is some stuff in there we can be positive about. Yeah, and I suppose that getting around the table is something that CHC is doing now, isn't it? You know, yourself and colleagues will be already speaking to officials in Welsh Government, you know, trying to plot that course, I suppose. Yeah, absolutely, James. And that's, you know, that's a, that's a kind of way of working, really. That's what we're here to do. Um, and a lot of, you know, a lot of what we do is really connecting Welsh Government officials with the expertise within our membership. Um, and sometimes we do that we are the conduit and we, we we do that representation. Sometimes it's about members in the room. You know, you know, it kind of really, really depends on on the nature of the conversation. Um, but across all all the big issues, everything that was in our own home manifesto um, and everything that's represented 
there in the programme for government, we absolutely want to be around the table. There's a nice saying, um, if you're not around the table, it probably means you're on the menu. So it's actually really, really important that we are. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what we taste like. That's, a, that's another, thought, <laughs> for another, another <laughs> thought for another Zoom uh, conversation there, I suppose. Um, I mean, I suppose when you look at all of the all of the different areas that housing is mentioned in here, I mean, it is vast. You know, we a lot of people don't they? They focus on the key headline figures, 20,000 um, social homes and that sort of thing. Um, but when you look at the other uh, asks, the other pledges, which ones, I mean, it might be the 20,000 uh, low carbon um, social homes, but when you look at those different pledges, which are potentially the most challenging or the ones that you would like to see action on maybe first? Um, is it a cop out if I say all of it? No, not at all. <laughs> um, you didn't no. tell me. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not going, I mean, I, I'm not going to. I think, but I think. I think broadly there is nothing in there that is straightforward. Every single thing in there is challenging and quite rightly so. Actually, the people of Wales deserve that. Um, and if you, we think about the scale of the challenges facing us, um, it needs to be ambitious. Um, you know, um, so so that in and of itself is 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 a good thing. Um, I think there's a there's a point to make first, which is that actually maintaining ground made in the fifth Senate can't be taken for granted, actually. Um, we saw record investment in social housing grants um, during the last Senate. And we saw um, in the last year, we saw this housing support grant brought back in line with what it would have been um, had austerity not happened. Those are really, really big gains made in a very challenging financial context. Um, so there is something about um, being being cautious to protect what we've won actually, and maintain maintain that and maintain that recognition and that um, that level of investment. Um, I guess there's a there's a kind of broad point that whatever it is that the Welsh government decides to invest in in this program, every single pound is going to have to work its absolute socks off. It's going to have to work really really hard. Um, it is going to be judged about against the impact it has on the economy, on the environment, and the kind of social boost that it gives. Um, uh, yeah, so I, I guess nothing is straightforward. If I had to pick one challenge in there, um, it would probably be decarbonisation. Um, I think, and the rationale for that being that there are just so many questions that remain unanswered. There is nothing in the programme for government on um, any funding arrangements um, or any funding commitments. Um, there's no detail there on um, what particularly is required. So, you know, what precisely is it that we're going to pursue in Wales? Um, uh, and there's nothing in there on timescales either. Um, so in lots of ways, what we have with regards to the carbonation, decarbonisation is the scale of the challenge, um, a really positive ambition, but a heck of a lot of work to do um, in between those things. Uh, to, so to make to make the ambition happen, to realise that ambition. Um, so if I had to go for one, um, that's probably the one I'd, I'd go for. Mm, but I suppose that's why it's important isn't it, to get around the table, as you say, and to make sure that you're not on the menu um, <laughs> uh, and you're having those conversations early uh, and getting through it. I want to touch on something you mentioned uh, a bit earlier around uh, obviously the, the, the wider benefits of housing when it comes to other sectors, be it decarb, like you say, or be it on the health service. Do you think... And, and it links to what you were saying about not wanting to lose ground from the, the, the fifth Senate term. Do you think traditionally or historically there has been an underappreciation of exactly what the sector does provide or what support it can give in other areas, which is which is obviously part of the home manifesto was kind of highlighting that. But do you think pre home there wasn't as much recognition as perhaps there is now? That is a really interesting question. I, I guess it would depend. I'm not sure there would be an answer where one size would fit all, actually. Um, I think a couple of things have changed um, in recent years. I think that the pandemic and the experience of the pandemic um, has meant that um, no matter who you are in Wales, um, you have an um, you have a newfound understanding of the importance of home um, and what home does to protect us, to keep us our, us and our family and our loved ones safe, um, to protect our health, um, 
you know, the place from which we we do our work. So many of us, you know, or those of us who are who are fortunate enough to be able to do our, the work from the safety of a home. Um, I think that there has been a kind of um, just a, a, a population wide and political wide recognition of the importance of home, actually. Um, uh, so that's I think that's part of it. Um, I also think that the challenges facing Wales now um, are just are so numerous um, and so interconnected and so complex um, that government are looking to um, kind of the tools available that help them fight on all fronts, if you like. Um, housing ticks that box. Um, so an investment in housing is an investment in the nation's health. It's an investment in local economies, um, in job opportunities, in training opportunities, in local supply chains. Um, it's an investment in um, positive action on climate change. You know, the list the list goes on. Um, the list goes on, really. Um, and so, I, you know, I guess earlier I was referring to every pound having to work really hard. Um, my sense is that housing, it, there is widespread recognition that, that an investment in good quality, affordable homes does that, um, uh, that it that it will help Wales um, make as much progress as possible on its recovery, actually, um, because, you know, the challenges that we are facing are really, really serious. We went into this pandemic thinking that the climate change was the, the single biggest pressing emergency that we were facing. You know, we're, we're not out of the pandemic yet. It's sometimes easy to talk as though we are. Um, the human cost of the pandemic, whilst we have an inclination, I think is, is still very much unknown. Um, the, the, and the contribution of, of, of home to those people, actually, those people who have really been really adversely affected by the pandemic is just um, will be huge. So I guess my sense is that that's the bit that's changed, actually, that there's kind of just recognition of the centrality of home, that it is the, it is the starting the starting place for kind of healthy, prosperous, connected lives. And uh, if, you've, if you've got that building block right, um, then you stand a much better chance of getting the other stuff right. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, well, look, if you are joining us um, on this uh, Zoom Q&A or you're watching via Facebook, we're just chewing over the programme for government that Welsh Government published last week. I'm I'm the communications manager for Community Housing Cymru and I'm I'm grilling, I say grilling, uh, Rhea Stevens. She's our head of uh, policy and external affairs at CHC. So just someone who knows what they're talking about when it comes to all this sort of legislation, this uh, government planning, that sort of thing. So just trying to get a best sense of what's going on. Now, we have, of course, encouraging people who are watching this to ask questions if they have any questions. And someone has asked a question, which is fantastic. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, so the question from Chris uh, Rhea is, is there a timetable for budget setting um, when it comes to money? So grants, pump priming uh, are going to be key, he says, uh, to new social housing, but retrofits, uh, for private and um, public stock. So I suppose a question there about when can we expect any money, if any money at all? And what's your sense from the conversations you've maybe had? Um, yes, so there's a, there's a rough budget, Chris, kind of to answer your question. So a draft budget is usually published by uh, the Welsh Government in the autumn. It kind of coincides or is, is, is uh, generally published uh, just after the autumn spending review by the, um, by the Westminster Government. You'll get a final budget then uh, in the spring term, so before uh, the end of March next year. We can certainly expect um, an allocation for grant in that budget. Um, uh to come through um there will also be kind of an annual allocations on things like the housing support grant on things like um the integrated care fund other big kind of both capital and revenue investments in housing that um that is uh, decided or determined on an annual basis um i think where we are going to have less clarity um is on um the kind of the total sum investment in things like decarbonisation. So what is the quantum that government think they need to make available or are able to make available um, for the retrofit of, of homes and so forth? We may what we are likely to see is some kind of um, discrete investments in, in different parts of the um, kind of decarbonisation catalogue, I suppose, or catalogue of activities that would make that up, but we're unlikely to see a big total uh, quantum announced uh, until government has really set out or made its mind up um, or, you know, determined 
uh, what it is that it wants to see delivered, what the timescales are. And it's only from that point then that they can kind of work out, right, what, what do we think the cost of that is and, and how, how can we meet that? Thank you. And another good question uh, coming from Nicholas, which I suppose follows on in many ways to what you've just been talking about, which is governments reorganised um, and created more thematic departments to like climate change department, for example, which brings together a lot of different uh, infrastructure. How do you think, again, from the early days of this new Senate uh, government, um, how do you feel this restructuring can benefit calls for cross sector working? Do you think it's going to help or not? Uh, yes, in in a word, I do, and it's a, it's a great it's a great question. Um, it's a great question, Nick. And I, um, and it, for anybody who has read the program for government, uh, people will see that that it is um, arranged by uh, by themes, actually, by kind of cross cross cutting themes or uh, what they describe as well being outcomes. So the the, the outcomes that um, that this government wants to wants to achieve. Um, I think it's an absolutely fantastic opportunity. I mean, what you really have in that climate change portfolio that is shared between uh, Julie James and Lee Waters is it's essentially an infrastructure uh, portfolio, really. There's all the big tools are in there. Uh, so you've got housing, you have transport, um, uh, you have energy. Um, so lots of big infrastructure bits there. Um, if I had to give it a plain English title, I'd probably call it the Ministry for Getting Stuff Done, because they've got tools in their toolbox where they can achieve the stuff um, that they want to and that they need to, and that's that's really, really important. What is really kind of cheering to see, actually, is that through um, that ministry, it's kind of clear that they're kind of unafraid to, um, to cross what we've previously kind of um, quite protected silos, actually, between government departments. Depart, um, department. So um, there's quite a lot of blend and read across between um, the climate change and the economy section, for instance. And there's even kind of read across between the climate change and the health section, actually, because, of course, positive action on climate change has, has you know, benefits, massive benefits to, um, to our health and to our well-being. Um, so I think there is um, uh, there's a big opportunity there. But what's interesting to me is that the programme for government is kind of distinguished in two parts. So there's a there's the section at the beginning, which is kind of 10 well-being outcomes and all the activity that government wants to take to achieve those. And that's described as cross cabinet responsibilities. So every single member of the cabinet has responsibilities for delivering all of those. So that tells me that this is a government kind of unafraid to um, dance with the complexity. Um, of of um, of cross sector working and what that might mean. Um, there's a section at the end there in which there's kind of discrete areas of responsibility that would fall under different portfolios, kind of set out separately from that. And um, I think that's quite an interesting approach, really. But I think what we can read into that is that through this program for government is that this is a government that's kind of willing to embrace complexity, um, wants to work kind of cross sector in the, in itself, which sounds bananas, but you know, the government is a massive beast. Um, it's a massive complex beast and actually getting bit different bits of government to work together is not always that easy, but this is a government that kind of saying, well, we think that if we do this, we'll have the greatest possible impact. And um, that's quite refreshing actually, because you know, the Welsh government has spent, well, since I've been active in this area, so kind of 12, 13 years asking other people to work together and to have cross-sector working and have strong partnerships. So it's quite refreshing um, to see that that kind of features in the programme for government as well. Ria, thank you very much. Um, we will probably be drawing it to a close soon, but Keith has just asked a question, uh, Ria, and I'll ask that to him in case you can't see it. He says, do you see the 20,000 social homes for rent, intermediate homes and shared ownership target being expanded to include help uh, help to buy, I assume that is, um, or rent to own and home buy. What what's your assessment of of that? Um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a good question, uh, Keith. But it, in a word, no. Um, Julie James uh, last week got out of the starting blocks really, really quickly to clarify uh, what she understands and what she means. Um, by the 20,000 social homes for rent target. She was talking exclusively in terms of, of homes that are uh, for rent um, and some kind of intermediate um, ownership options. Um, 
she did say in the statement that there was some scope for thinking about uh, the role of acquisitions within that. Um, so this wasn't talking entirely all about, about new build homes. Um, but what I think what we can expect to see is whilst there's a small proportion potentially um, of, um, of acquisitions within there, what, what this government and what this minister were really, really interested in um, is, is not necessarily home ownership, but this is about social homes for rent um, and making sure that homes are available to everybody, not just those who can afford to get on the housing ladder. Ria, thank you very much. Keith, thank you for your question. Um, look, we'll probably have to draw it to a close. Ria, my final question to you then, I suppose, after talking non-stop almost for half an hour, so thank you for that, um, is, is, is what next? You know, in the next sort of months, weeks, what are you going to be focusing on um, in your role, uh, you know, as this new government beds in and starts trying to, you know, put rubber to the road, essentially, with this, with this programme? Yeah, it's such a good question. It's such a good question because there's a there's always a sense, isn't there, with um with any kind of campaign, you know, whatever it is, you kind of um you you you're running towards a an end point, and often the program for government can kind of feel like the moment at which you know or you can determine, you know, how much success or you've had or how much impact you've had. But actually, that's the point where things just start to get going. Actually, that's when the hard work really really starts. Um, so I guess there's there's a couple of things. Um. In the next uh, in the next couple of months uh, to be focusing in on uh, one of the really obvious ones is kind of relationships and partnerships actually so we are fortunate we've had a, a continuity of minister in Julie James um, I think that's really positive actually and this is a minister who understands the value of housing associations recognition uh, recognizes what they bring to the table um, there's no kind of period by which um, a minute a new minister becomes kind of bedded in and has to get to grips with their brief. You know, this is this is um, a minister who can get straight on and continue with business and can kind of get on um, and deliver. Um, so that's that's really wonderful. Um, uh, and that's really positive. Obviously, uh, we have a new uh, a new deputy minister to build relationships with, so Lee Waters. That there was relationships in the previous Senate, so Lee held responsibility for things as a deputy minister for the economy, held uh, relations had responsibility for things like the foundational economy. So the relationships are there, but but obviously they need to be strengthened and to be built upon. So relationships are absolutely there, a, a priority. I would say actually for our members as well. Um, you know, relationships are not just held at a national level. They are not just held um, by a trade body. Um, there's uh, the dynamics and the numbers in the Senate this time um, mean that um, actually every single political party wields power and wields influence. Um, and what we want uh, to see the greatest possible kind of um, investment and recognition and respect for housing is we need 60 champions of housing and 60 champions of housing associations across the center so there's a huge role for our members to be building relationships during this period as well um i guess the other thing that i would mention is then kind of the partnerships that are needed to deliver these ambitions um so um, we are having active conversations both with Welsh Government but uh, with some of our delivery partners as well about the, the kind of role that we're all going to play through this period. So what can we bring to the table to help to help realise these ambitions and make good stuff happen, basically? Um, so that would include partners like, um, like uh, our partners in local government through WLGA, uh, includes our partners in health. So we're having conversations with health boards. Um, so this is really the moment, um, I think, or the moment in the political calendar um, where everybody's trying to work out um, what their role, what their role in delivering this is, um, what they can bring to the table, um, and trying to make sure that they've got the relationships in place that make, can make that happen. There we go. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time and for speaking so much because I basically sat here and listened, which is great. Um, but thank you very much for your Let's time. Uh, it, well, yeah, absolutely. Go and get yourself a much earned new pint glass of water. Um, thank you so much for your time and thank you for everybody for watching both on the Zoom call, uh, Zoom as well as on Facebook. Don't forget, you can, of course, follow us on Twitter, CH Cymru on Twitter and we are, of course, on Facebook and our website, chcymru.org.uk if you want any more information about what we do and indeed what housing associations do too. Thank you for watching.